This is Fisher Frying Products. I'm Dave Hertner. Welcome to The Nest. Our video newsletters provide weekly insight into building and flying our 15 wooden aircraft designs. Polini Motori of Italy is a gracious sponsor of our channel. Polini is the manufacturer of the Thor 250 DS, a two-stroke liquid-cooled 36 horsepower engine that is used in all of our single seat designs. Please take the time to watch our videos to the end as this assists us in the metrics that YouTube uses to rate our channel. Hit the like button if you feel that the content is worthy. We invite you to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the subscribe button and hitting the bell so that you are notified whenever we post our newsletters. Hello everyone. Since I posted my last video almost two weeks ago, things have been crazy around here. I have so much to tell you that I'm going to split it up into two videos. This first video, we're going to talk about the following. First, a big thank you to everyone who has subscribed to our channel. We've had just under 700 click the subscribe button and we're moving quickly toward our first major goal of 1,000 subscribers. We've accepted our first deposit for the Fisher Aria. We have four more spots in our launch special and I will give an update on that program today. I've revised the wing folding model based on viewer input and Tim Ketchum has already been working on the installation of a prototype in his FP202. I will comment on this and show our drawings and photos of Tim's effort. We have designed a new elevator trim actuator that we would like to show you. And finally, in this video, we'll visit Dana Haig and his wonderful little FP404. He does a walk around for us and then we get to see and hear the little biplane in flight. So buckle up, let's get to it. I know that you hear us give a consistent reminder to click on the subscribe button and for those who have already subscribed, we wanna thank you. You represent about 37% of the people watching the videos. This means that out of some 1,883 viewers, about 1,188 have not subscribed. Now we very much appreciate that you consistently stop by our channel and view our content. If just one third of that 1,188 who visit but haven't hit the button would do so, we would hit our goal in about a week. When we reach 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to make five draws from the subscriber list. One for a free set of plans and four for free t-shirts. So hit that button and win. Next, I'd like to congratulate Rudy for being the first person to take us up on our introductory offer on an area kit. We have four more spots available for this offer that reduces the price by, of the kit by a US $6,000. And you get a Rotax engine or an electro thrust propulsion package at our cost. If you're interested in a strong performing tandem aircraft that has the ability to cruise above 170 miles an hour, Give me a call and get your deposit down on a kit delivery uh, for summer 2022. Now we've started work on the transfer of the original 2D design into SolidWorks so that we can provide excellent drawings and 3D views to speed the assembly process. It's important to get this phase completed so that individual part model data can be pulled out to program our CNC router. Cutting as many of the components on the CNC router as possible will keep the price of the kit reasonable and will allow for faster assembly. Lastly, we intend to manufacture all the hardware components locally so precise drawings for all components is critical to get great quality fit and finish. In this next segment I'm going to give an update on the work done to change the wing folding mechanism design. I've got a lot of input from uh, you guys out there and I really appreciate that and we've tried to incorporate that into the design so that everybody seems to um, uh, appreciate it, um, it more that way. Um, the one big thing that came up was, uh, was the wing hinge design and what we've done here is we've gone from uh, what was a universal joint sort of uh, off of a large impact socket set kind of thing that I was going to use to having a T made out of steel that's, that's uh, housed in um, 6061 aluminum. Um, to keep things light, aluminum here, aluminum here, aluminum on these two here with the 6061, or sorry, with the, uh, the mild steel uh, uh, solid T inside of that. And then we've got a 4130 tube that runs all the way through uh, in this bearing. Uh, the bearing here is a Delrin bearing. It's press fit into a 40, uh, into a 6061 
T6 tube that's welded to a, another plate here. So um, the Delrin gives it its slip sliding. You'd be able to lubricate that with a lithium grease or something like that. And um, then this whole mechanism rotates. So it slides in and out and it also rotates around. So that gives you your two, your two degrees of freedom. And as you can see, as you pull it back in, it tucks into a slot that's right in on the interior side that would allow the wing root rib to come right up to the uh, exterior uh, shape on the fuselage. So um, now I've, I've, I've had people ask me questions about, you know, nose down versus nose up and, and both have their merits. Nose down, um, the leading edge is a little tougher than the trailing edge. And so when you're putting it in a cradle at the, you know, as you fold it, um, then, then it, it's going to be a little, a little more robust. Um, and so, as, as you see here, I'm, 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 I'm going to fold it around, and you can see that it's, this is its folded position, and, and. Now, when it's, and it's, be, it'll be folded when it's out, when, when it's pulled out like this, and then you can actually tuck it back in, to the. Uh, it's not quite folded there we go so you can see you can go 90 degrees here I've got the limited and freedom of 90 degrees but um, it's uh, as it folds you would um, you would set the nose in the cradle now the other the problem with that is if you've got tanks in the wings um, if you've got tanks in the wings then then you're gonna be draining fuel so what you would have to do is set it up so it, it folds the other direction with the trailing edge down and then support it uh, at the tail uh, in a way so that the uh, the trailing edge is protected and the aileron is protected but uh, both of them are doable um, but as you can see this um, the whole idea is is now is that when um, you know when you've got it folded up that the uh, the rod is out and the back is supported um, this rod then can be pulled back in tighter to the airplane if you want, um, but ultimately that's in essence how it works. Um, I've had questions about whether the struts stay attached to the ring, wing, and that's another reason why you might want to fold it the other direction where right now we've got this folding with the flat side going into the fuselage. But if you want to keep the struts attached to the wing, then you might want to fold it the other direction where the, the curved part goes toward the fuselage. And then the strut, which is longer from the, from the, uh, from the strut attach point to the fuselage, because it's on an angle down, it's actually longer than this. And so to get it to fold up flat, you're going to have to pull this out, you know, somewhat, somewhere around nine inches to get to, um, to it with an, an enough room to, to fold it flat. So um, again, these are a few of the questions that have come up uh, from people. Um, will it be available, um, you know, with the kits? Yes, we're going to design these for all of our kits and the, so they'll be available with the kits. And will they be available for retrofit? And yes, that's a, a yes as well. So uh, those are sort of the questions that I've had, um, you know, with this. We've tried to accommodate the design change and try to make it simpler. I've had a couple of guys that's uh, one guy that said that they could even do it, you know, even more simply, um, and that's fine. But I wanted to keep this a little bit more robust. Um, we're gonna have people yanking on these things and whatnot and pulling them out. One person doing it. It's all designed to be done by one person, um, and so in that kind of case, you want this mechanism here to be robust and it not torquing and not coming apart and not wearing over time. So we tried to make it a little more robust. So anyway, that's the uh, update on the. Uh, on the wing pivot mechanism and uh, our next segment is going to be about our new design for a elevator trim lever mechanism so stay tuned here we go here's an elevator trim control actuator that I've designed we needed a way to move the trim tab on the elevator and couldn't find anything that we liked in the aircraft spruce catalog so we decided to design one up ourselves we've worked hard to keep the design flush to the side of the cockpit as possible to reduce any interference with cockpit egress so you can so see that this is very, very, uh, very narrow. It's only about an inch and an inch or so wide, an inch and a half. Um, we wanted to make sure getting into the cockpit and out of the cockpit wasn't going to be impeded by this place being placed in there. Now, depending on where it is relative to your seat position, um, it would be important for placement. But uh, um, 
that's what we decided to do here. Um, it looks like we're going to try to do a few little changes yet. I think the trim lever length needs to be a little bit longer. Um, this uses a gated lever design um, and with a friction lock at the bottom. And um, as you can see, the friction lock uh, goes through a threaded insert that goes through the steel threaded insert that goes through the aluminum body. On the back of here, you've got steel um, wood inserts to keep uh, anti-rotation and and uh, provide a, a secure uh, a secure point to mount the piece uh, to a block that would be inserted in with the original um, uh, fuselage side pieces. Uh, we do have a hole in the bar um, and I'm still working on a way and it may be part of this piece here um, that we, we put a, 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 some sort of mechanism here with a screw on the bottom that would anchor the outer sleeve of the um, uh, of the wire uh, that goes back to or the it's like a lawnmower style type uh, push pull cable that goes out to the back uh, where the um, where the trim tab is um, but as you can see friction lock here and the only other thing too that we might add would be on this on this part in here um, we might add us an arced set of of detent holes and then put some sort of uh, piece, uh, I don't know, set screw or something like that in the arm so that as you move it along, I think I can move it. No, um, as you move it along in an arc, it'll allow it, it'll it'll take in a detent position so that it's not so prone to moving should this friction lock come come loose a little bit kind of thing. So um, anyway, uh, I'm always open to hearing your thoughts on on design. Um, and uh, throw me your ideas. I think this is a, a nice little piece. It, it's not that difficult to make. Uh, we could provide a plan for it uh, once I've, now that I've got it drawn in CAD and, um, and we, can, uh, we can offer it as an accessory as well. So anyway, there it is. Last up for this video is a great video from Dana Haig. He gives us a walk around introduction to his, well, his old FP404, he sold it now. Uh, before showing us how this neat little biplane handles take off and landing. I hope you enjoy. Thanks Dana for sharing this video with the people who wonder what a small single seat biplane is like. Too windy to fly today so I'll do this walk around in my Fisher 404. We'll start in the cockpit. cockpit enough room for an average size guy conventional instruments fuel gauge on the side there that's a temporary bracket for a handheld GPS I was experimenting with down on the floor is the, is the choke the parking brake lock which doesn't do much the fuel valve and the mixture control pocket for small stuff ICOM radio connected to an antenna overhead. That's a little tray for my smartphone I use with the GPS. Small baggage compartment. Whole streamlined tubing for the cabane struts. Also streamlined tubing on the main wing struts. Wheel pants, Azusa brakes, any gears a little bit cleaned up from the original design, and the control linkage on the plants it should be outside is inside, also cleaner. That's the Mosler engine, oil dipstick there, shielded ignition, slick magneto. Fuel caps recessed, also cleaner and less drag. Strut attachment crossbar, also cleaner in the original design. Streamlined tubing there again. The lower wings are clipped nine inches each side from the plans. Tail braces wire instead of tubing, again less drag.
There's the custom made tail wheel, works a lot better than the original. That's a tab for ground release for, for when you're hand propping, tie a rope to it. Ground adjustable trim tab, looks like the original builder planned to make a cockpit adjustable but never did, it's really not necessary. And there you have it. camera movement, I'm just trying to move out of the way. Climbs. Man, yeah, just fine.
Thanks again for watching. We try hard to bring you interesting content each week. To help us out, please like and share our videos. And to receive the latest info from Fisher Flying Products, click the subscribe button and ring the bell. See you next time from the nest.